Welcome to my incredibly difficult challenge. I'm attempting to turn just £400 into a Porsche 911. The first phase of this challenge is to build up some starter cash by turning around some really cheap cars. Then we can move on to phase two, which I'll reveal later. In our last video, we bought and prepared for sale a tasty Vauxhall Corsa that we bought for just £240. The worst part was the car didn't come with a V5, which is especially irritating because we can't get it up for sale straight away. But I decided to use the time effectively. Basically, I got bored and resprayed the bonnet and refurbed the headlights. So this is what the car looks like now. But more importantly, what did we sell it for? And what's the next project? We'll reveal the next project in a moment, but first, we sold the Corsa for... 570. I'm happy with that. At the end of the last video, we also mentioned that we'd already bought another project and that it was much worse than the Corsa. And that was true, so here it is. This is a 2002 Honda Jazz in the strangest colour I've ever laid my eyes on. And I paid just £300 for this absolute weapon. And as always, it's got some damage. And the radio's not working, but we'll get to that insane fix later. Our first step is to normally clean the car, but on this occasion I didn't bother, and this may surprise you, because it's already been done. That's nasty. Sadly, the only improvement I can realistically make to the exterior is respraying several panels and refurbishing the headlights. The headlights, yeah, that's a quick job. But respraying several panels isn't, and it's not a job that I really want to take on. Especially because at the point of getting the car home, I'd already sold it. So instead, our main focus is to fix the radio. I promised the buyer that I would do this, and I think I speak for us all when I say that it's quite possibly the most important part of any car. Okay, so the main problem is the radio is not working. It's working, but it's just not playing anything, and we know that the speakers are fine. Apparently, there's a chip on the board which goes wrong all the time, but we're going to put a CD in and see what happens. But I got it out. Not going to lie, it was a massive ball ache. So now all I need to do is get the board out of here, which I've got no idea how to do, but how hard can it be? And then find the little bit that needs replacing, whip it out, put the new one in, and hopefully it works. If not, I'm going to fuck. Several days later, the part turned up, so we tried fixing it. And although I have zero footage at all, it worked. And now that the most important part is done, we can refurbish the headlights. Since all of this, the buyer has now paid and collected the car, which brings me nicely on to our new project and the main content of this video. Now, I have gone a little bit over budget with this one, but first, how much did we sell the Jazz for? Well, we sold the Jazz for £700. I sold it cheap because it was to a friend, but even if I had sold it at full price, we still wouldn't have raised enough capital for what I've bought next. This is an Audi S3 8P in a gorgeous dark blue. Three door with a sunroof and a full service history, including time and chain and water pump just done. I'll reveal exactly how much I paid for this stunning car at the end of the video, but in true more boost fashion, it's got some issues. Firstly, 30 seconds after driving the car home from buying it, it didn't idle. The engine light then came on, and also the tyre light. I knew the tyres needed some love, but the engine management light was not expected. Naturally, I was very disappointed, especially considering the money that I just paid for the car. But apart from the idle, it was, it was running great. But the problems didn't stop there. I then discovered that the passenger door isn't unlocking. Classic VW Audi group problem. And then the final problem is that when you do manage to get the passenger door open, it catches on the wheel arch. What? But apart from that, it is stunning. Now, normally I'd start off with cleaning the car, but on this occasion, I was hyper-focused on fixing the idle and then clearing the EML. So on Friday night, I did a few hours of research and came to the conclusion that the PCV needed changing. And being that it's a common cause of this issue and that it's only 60 pounds, I went to bed a happy man. Okay, so I've got to take the air intake off mass airflow sensor and then this pipe as well okay so i think this guy's the problem so i'm gonna whip it off take it apart and have a look but upon further inspection it was clear that the part had already been replaced so i thought hey let's pump the tires back up take it out for a ride come back and listen closely to the engine seems easy right 
Okay, this is the cap, the valve cap, the dust cap was seized onto here. And it is like that on three wheels. One of them, I've got it off, and now I've got it off on this one too. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yep, one valve sheared off. I took the tire down to my local shop, he replaced the valve for me, I got home, slapped it back on, and then a very smart friend popped over, he took one look at the car and said, your issue is somewhere in this general area, and then we tugged on a bunch of hoses and then we diagnosed the issue. This hose connected to the intake manifold was cracked, causing the issue. New hose we had lying around in the shed, got some clips. And try pop it on and see if it works. So you can see on the end of that, obviously that's where one side of it goes, and then that's where that's where the other side goes. So this is roughly the right shape. Look at that. She's idling. I can't believe it. Just need to get rid of that one now. Ah, oh, so happy. Yes! Okay, so now we've got the main issue fixed. Now it's time to adjust the alignment of the door, passenger door, to the wing because it's clipping when you open the door. Then after we've done that, we can then look at fixing the central lock-in for that passenger door as well. So you can see here where the door has been rubbing up against the... Where the door has been rubbing up against the wing, it's actually caught and ripped the paint off. Obviously, we'll get some touch-up pen on that touch up paint on that make it look good but to prevent that from continuing um, I think I'm just gonna move the door that way because the front wing looks really good okay the door is now just not clipping the wing it is very 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 close but it's not touching so i think i'm going to leave it because i don't want to break anything so i'm going to get some touch up paint and touch it up so it looks a little bit better but for now i need to try figure out why that door isn't unlocking okay so we've messed around with the locking mechanisms we've got in my hand and basically we've come to the conclusion that the actual mechanism in there is just filthy and it's getting stuck so I'm going to take it to the shed and I'm going to WD it and hopefully it will work. Okay, so next morning the door still isn't fixed. I think I figured out what's wrong with it. So I just need to wait for the part to come. It should be here today. So in the meantime, I'm just going to clean it because it's filthy. Okay, so the car is clean. It literally has watermarks everywhere because it is so hot today. Honestly, I shouldn't have really cleaned it. Okay, the new unit showed up. I fitted it to the car and if we lock. Doesn't open, unlock. It works, I'm so happy. So now I've got to put the door card back on. That'll be a two second job. Then what I'm gonna do is clean the inside of the car. Then I can take some pictures and list it for sale and cry. Howdy. Right, so this morning we are touching up the Audi. That sounds weird. So this morning we are putting touch up paint on the Audi on the bits where the paint is not there, obviously. Okay, I've had a go at using the touch-up pen, sanding it down and then buffing it. I think it's gone pretty well. I think the main reason we can still see it is because it's still lumpy. A little bit there. 
Obviously in person you can see it a lot more, but it just looks so much better. So there you have it, our S3 is looking gorgeous and went up for sale that night. I picked the car up for just £5,400 all in. But you have to wait to the next video to see how much I sold it for, because it's already sold.